بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأنا على مستغفرك لما العالم ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Whom do you follow? We have to ask ourselves this as Muslims. We have to continuously assess where do we take our creed from? Where do we take our methodology or minhaj for understanding the religion? Our methodology of da'wah, our methodology of politics, our methodology of every interaction in our life. Where do we take it from? Whose sunnah do we follow? As I just ran into one of my colleagues, may Allah preserve him, and he told me some very interesting information. He shared with me his story. He said, and he doesn't know Arabic language, but he relies on translated material, and he mentioned to me that he likes to consider himself between uh, the poles or the various spears or, or groups in Islam. He said, I'm not with Ibn Taymiyyah's thought, but I'm more inclined toward Imam Ghazali's thought. And he mentioned, I like some of Ibn al-Qayyum's Ibn al work, and I like such and such on spirituality, and I'm a follower of Imam Abu Hanifa, and such, and so forth. And I responded to him, as my Muslim brother, I said, we're not ordered to follow Imam so-and-so or Sheikh so-and-so. Even if they're great Imams, we love them, and great Imams of the Sunnah. And I mentioned that the four A'imma, A'imma Ta'arba, that the Ummah has ittifaq and agreeance upon their fadail and that they're the fuqaha of this Ummah. Imam Abu Hanifa being the first, Imam Shafi'i, wa Imam Malik, wa Imam Ahmed, Rahimahumullah Jameer, and that they all had different fadail and different uh, understandings. And some relied upon ahadith and sound ahadith more than others. Rahimahumullah Jameer. And I mentioned that to him, and that we are not ordered, even from those great imams, to blindly follow and to asab, to have prejudice towards any one of those great imams, even as great as they are, and may Allah have mercy upon them all, and bless them all with Jannah Tafardos for what they left behind uh, in knowledge and fiqh and understanding of this religion and their practice and the example they set for us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَعَطِيُوا اللَّهُ وَعَطِيُوا رسول. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and follow Allah and His Messenger. Be obedient to, obedient to Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the sunnah we're ordered to follow. We're ordered to, for, uh, we're ordered to ittiba, not ibtida. We're ordered to follow the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to hold on to it and not come up with newly invented manners, uh, matters and affairs. And that this is an order and a commandment from Allah. It's not from this particular methodology and this particular madhab. But this is the madhab of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed guidance upon as a guidance and a mercy for mankind. Salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi. So I mentioned this to my brother. And what made me ponder and reflect about his experience and which is so common for us all is that we see a lot of times that people there when they aren't grounded on the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they'll make statements based upon their desires and they'll follow this one and they'll follow that one and they'll go from one extreme to the other extreme why do I say this he considers himself a spiritualist and I said Islam encompasses everything it encompasses encompasses spirituality and encompasses uh, all those aspects of the religion. You don't have to take out any special quality 
or aspect and exclude other aspects of the religion. Islam has spirituality. We, if we follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi we'll be the most spiritual people. But if we follow Imam so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so, and what they're calling to is not in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it's misguidance. It isn't spirituality. It's spiritual bankruptcy is what it is. وَعِيَادَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ So, this individual related his story. He said, you know, I used to be an ultra-salafist is what he said. And I used to make takfir to the people. Well, already that's a contradiction. That's already a contradiction because Ahl Sunnah, the Salaf Asali, were against the madhab of the Khawarij who made takfir to the people. And that was their madhab. But Ahl Sunnah is the most careful and cautious, and they know that there's a criterion, the Wabit, and there's shurut, there's conditions, and there's mu'ana, there's things that prohibit from making takfir. Ahl Sunnah is the most observant of those principles. And that's the madhab of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. And that's the madhab of the imam, a'imma, a'imma to deen, the imams of Ahl Sunnah, which differs with the Khawarij which differs with the Shia, which differs with the uh, the, the Qadariya and the Murjiya and the Jahmiya and the Mu'attala and the Mu'tazila and the other groups and sects and Jama'at which go against the Madhab of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. But Ahl Sunnah is the most observant of the principles of the religion. Ahl Sunnah adheres to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as their Murja as their point of reference. And this particular brother, may Allah have mercy upon him and guide him, he said that Imam Abu Hanifa is his reference. Then he goes back to the Imam and I said, that's a great Imam, an Imam of the Sunnah. But what he states that is not in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, which Muhammad ibn Abdullah didn't, didn't, didn't come, come with in an authentic narration in his Sunnah, then we don't, we reject that. And that's, those are some of the very statements that Imam, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa himself, Rahimullah Ta'ala, said. That if you find a contradiction between what I say and what uh, the, and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, then throw my coal, you know, throw my statement, uh, uh, discard my statement. And these are similar, we have narrations of Imam Malik and Imam Shafi'i and Imam Ahmed with the same meaning. And that those imams did not want you to follow them, but they wanted you to follow Muhammad ibn Abdullah. That they were a wasila because they had knowledge and they were able to go and take the ahkam from the nusus and make ta'zim of sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and show us the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's what we're ordered to follow with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَتِيُ اللَّهُ وَعَتِيُ الرُّسُولُ وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَعَتِيُ اللَّهُ وَعَتِيُ الرَّسُولُ وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنْ تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And if you, and, and, and those who are charged in authority over you, again showing that the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to follow the leader of the Muslims and the leaders of the Muslims, not rebel against them, not protest against them, not make take of them, unlike how Allahi, state and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَعْتِيُ اللَّهُ وَعْتِيُ رُسُولُ وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ So if you disagree about something return it to Allah and return it to the Sunnah the, 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 His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam How do we return it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We return it to His Sunnah Alayhi salatu wa salam. His sunnah is mawjood. His sunnah is hay. His sunnah is alive. By going back to kitab illah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By going back to the text. So if we disagree about something, and this is what I was trying to articulate to my brother, is that we disagree about something here. You're saying go back to Imam Abu Hanifa. And you're saying you don't agree with the statements of, of the madhab regarding uh, uh, Imam Abu Yusuf and, and, and the other, the as they say, sahibay of Imam, uh, the, the biggest students of Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahimahullah, Jamian. That if it 
that you disagree with them, you always go back to Abu Anifa. I said, no, that's a mistake. I said, you should go back to the strongest adinla, the strongest evidence that we look at the aqwal of all the a'imma. And those statements, which are in most in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu we take those, we accept those, and we follow those. Because that's what we're ordered to do. Allah's going to ask you in your grave, Man Rabbak, who's your Lord? Man Nabiyak, who's your Prophet? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's Muhammad ibn Abdullah. It isn't Imam Abu Hanifa. It's not Imam Ahmed. It's not Imam Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah. It's not Imam Ghazali. It's not Hamza Yusuf. It's not this guy. It's not that guy. No. You're going to be asked about following the Sunnah of the Prophet, and you're going to be asked, what Madinak? What is your religion? Your religion is Islam. And Islam, as Shaykh al Islam, Muhammad ibn the Wahhab, Rahimullah Ta'ala, said in the beginning of his treaties, he said it's an obligation upon every Muslim to follow four things. The first thing is knowledge. Then he said, He gave us those thalath and messiah that were going to be asked in the grave. He said the first thing, what, what encompasses knowledge, he said, is knowing the law, meaning Tawheed. Knowing and practicing Tawheed, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, knowing Him by His divine names and attributes, calling and supplicating upon, uh, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by those divine names and attributes which are reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's none like unto Him. And He is all hearing and all seeing. So it's knowing Tawheed, Ma'rifat Allah. And knowledge is also Ma'rifat al Nabi. And knowing his Prophet, وسلم, which we're going to be asked in the grave. And knowing the religion of Islam with his textual proofs. That's what we're ordered to do. We're not ordered to follow this one or that one. Taqlid of this and taqlid of that. No. If you don't have the knowledge and the ability to go to the text, of course, then you make, there's a degree of taqlid, especially in a more fiqiyah. And in fatawa, but in your creed, many of the ulama they say, "La, it's not not permissible." The, the creed you have to know. You have to know. There's certain amount of knowledge every Muslim has to, to know. Innu yajibu alayna ta'alam arba masail, arba masail. We have to know four things: the knowledge, and the second thing is practicing that knowledge. And the third thing is calling to that knowledge, making da'wah. And the fourth thing is being sabr, is having, being, having patience. And the evidence for that, as Imam Muhammad stated, is a statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says, بَادَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنِ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالْعَصَرْ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ لَلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala says, and swears by the time. By the time. Verily mankind is in a loss. Except those who have faith. Except for those who believe. They have iman. And, and iman and it takes that knowledge. That's the delil. That's the evidence of knowledge. That you have to have knowledge of who Allah is. Knowledge of the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, And knowledge of Islam. Except for those who have belief, who have faith. And they do righteous deeds. And they call to the haq, meaning da'wah. They practice and they do da'wah. And they are patient upon that path. It's a patient path calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we're ordered to do. The Prophet sallallahu that's who we follow. The Muslims, we follow the Prophet وسلم, and the methodology of the Salaf Salih, how the Sahaba, عنه, majma'in, how they understood the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, because they explained it for us. They carried the religion, they carried the Quran, they transmitted it to us. عنه, majma'in. And those who curse them, those who go against them, they're not from amongst us. We don't love them, we have no love for them, we have no concern for them because they've made themselves enemies to us. May Allah protect us from the harm of the Shia, the Rafida, and those people who curse the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala ajma'in. So we have to ask ourselves, who do we follow? Do we follow Muhammad ibn Abdullah? 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, Alaykum bi sunnati, wa sunnata khulafa rashidin al-mahdeen. It's upon you my sunnah, the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, Khalifa, Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, wa radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in. Do we follow his sunnah? And the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifa? Or do we follow Imam so-and-so? Sheikh so-and-so? Da'i so-and-so? Is that the asal of the religion? No, abadan. The dalil, what is considered dalil in Islam, evidence in Islam, is the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet and the ijma' of the salaf, of this ummah. And as some state qiyas, qiyas falls in after that. That's Those are the maratib of adillah. Those are the levels of evidence in Islam. That's who we follow. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. We don't follow our desires. We don't follow our man. We don't follow our madhab and blindly follow this, blindly follow that. We follow Muhammad ibn Abdullah. The Prophet sallallahu said, Man ahtadha fi amrina hadha ma laysa min wa furad. Whoever innovates in this affair of ours, then it's rejected. Showing us that following others, if it goes against his sunnah, alayhi salatu wa salam, especially in ibadah and fiqh and things pertaining to the religion, then this is rejected. Because his sunnah is what we're ordered to follow. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, after describing the groups that had divided in the sects by following their desires, by following their leaders, by following their malahib. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when they asked about who is the group that will be saved, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى مِثْلِ وَمَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ وَسَحَابِي The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَكَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ When he was asked about those who will be saved, the Firqa to Najia, he said, those who are upon uh, what I'm upon, meaning his sunnah, and what his uh, companions are upon, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَنْعَلِ مَجْمَعِينَ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمْ عَلَى النَّبِيَ النَّمُحَمِّدْ وَعَلَى عَلَيْهِ وَسَحْبِهِ وَسَلَمْ So we have to ask ourselves, ask yourself, أَيَّا مُسْلِمْ who do you follow? Do you follow Muhammad ibn Abdullah? Or do you follow Sheikh so-and-so? Do you follow Muhammad ibn Abdullah? Or do you follow your marid? Do you follow Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Or do you follow Imam so-and-so? Sheikh so-and-so? Or your the awliya? Or so-and-so and fulani and fulan? You have to ask yourself that. And you have to tamasically kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.